I'm with Nolan Ramsier from Poe Productions, and you guys have some interesting modifications to the GoPro. Yeah. Tell me what you got here. Yeah, so we changed the lenses out. We'll basically take the stock fisheye lens and we'll turn it into something that's rectilinear. Uh, your lines are all straight. You don't get a big, you know, it looks like, it doesn't look like you're in a weather balloon if you're on a UAV, you know, you're really high up. So. How will they know it's GoPro footage if it doesn't have the uh, fisheye lens on it? Unfortunately, you won't, which is the point. We're trying to convince people that you can actually modify a GoPro to have people not think it is. And so we have a lot of, like, news companies and, and high production companies that use them and can intermix the, our footage with the lenses from us with the professional lenses and so you can save money by only putting this little inex inexpensive comparatively uh, camera and copter in the air whereas most of these guys are running these huge systems worth thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and so we can do that for much much cheaper. Okay, so if I wanted to have uh, one of my lens change out, I send you my GoPro yeah. and then you guys yeah, modify Yeah, we do, we do all sorts of stuff. We, you can buy the products directly from us, just the lenses, the filters, the accessories, whatever. You can send the cameras to us. You can buy already modified cameras from us, you know, ready to go. We, everything that we do personally has a warranty from us. If you do it yourself, Go, uh, in general, GoPro warranty is voided, period, when you, you open the thing up. Sure. So, but, uh, you know, so we have our own stuff because we warrant our stuff. We do, we do camera okay, so, modifications all the time. All right. Yeah. So separate from actually modifying the camera, what can, what can we get from you that uh, isn't quite as scary as tearing open my GoPro? <laughs> so the, we do a lot of stuff with filters. So the stock lens on the GoPro itself has an IR cut filter, which is going to lit through only visible light. Whereas, for instance, on this camera right here, what I have is, is there's no IR... Uh, filter on the lens that's on here. So what I've done is I've actually put an external filter that is only litting through IR light. And Wait so, a minute, but if the built-in filter so lets in IR, off. so you do have to modify to yes. do that. So okay. if you do modify the camera, okay. yes. But what I'm saying is, I'm just using this as an example right. because if you do have the stock lens, you could put something on. Sorry, I'm reaching down here. Um, All right, he's reaching down to grab um, a filter. Let's here. let's say let's say you have the stock lens which sees everything from uh, you know all the color. Okay, but let's say you want to only see blue, which is something you can do on the stock lens, right? Again, we don't cater to the stock lenses as much. We mod lenses for, we mod cameras for ours. But this now is showing only the blue wavelength of light that this camera is seeing that's in the area right here. Now, obviously we're under like fluorescent lighting and maybe a little bit of, of incandescent, which has IR in it and stuff, but that's what we're doing. So, so for for the listening audience, uh, what you what you did was you've got a you've got an adapter ring that's a press fit yep. onto the normal GoPro, and mm -hmm. then you added a filter that you threaded onto Externally. there. Externally. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, and so we do external and internal filters. All the filters we have externally, we also can do internally using our own lens mount, which we've taken the GoPro mount and tweaked, and we've fabricated ourselves. And so you can put all the smaller filters that we have also inside. Again, modifying a camera. We're, we're sure. a big mod company, so yeah. Yeah, sure, no, that's cool. So, um, let's see. Now I've got I've got filters yep. and oh you were talking about this Jello thing and if, yeah, you, if you've ever seen a yeah. GoPro video where it kind of goes, blur, 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 so yeah. that's what you're talking about the Jello. Yeah, so Jello is basically the shutter speed of the camera going too fast for what you're trying to film and in you're in a UAV environment or high vibration environment your camera is going to be wiggling if it's mounted to a vehicle or wherever right. So and the frame rate is too fast. Uh, it's or the shutter, shutter speed. speed. The shutter speed typically is too fast and so what you do is you're it, the, the, it's scanning like the, over each frame. And then it's going to scan. Let's say the camera's over to the right, and it scans the top. And then you'd wiggle it to the left, and it's over. To, and now the the camera's moved to the other side. And so that's what you get that jello, okay. and that's actually the camera being moved in the time that it scans across the image. And that's okay, that's yeah. the shutter speed. So what we do? You can even see that on an iPhone sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. And it just depends. And it actually has a lot to do with lighting. So the more light that's available. The, the shutter speed can adjust for that. If you darken that light, or you, you're going out at nighttime or something like that, your shutter speed is going to really, really decrease because it's going to want to try to get as much light. So what we do is we trick the camera by darkening it. On the GoPro, you can't adjust the shutter speed. So what we do is we darken it with a neutral density filter. And neutral density filters have been used very popularly by other companies too. And we're just coming out with our versions. They're all glass. And we also have cheap plastic ones, which we've had for a while. But the glass ones, as most people know, is optically better. So we're coming out with our own systems. But yeah, neutral density okay. filters. Okay, cool. Let's move on from there to uh, you've got lenses on the outside. I'm yeah. looking at what looks to be a maybe even a zoom lens on the outside of a GoPro. Yeah. So we we have a we work with a company up in Canada that uh, goes by the name of Backbone, uh, and they make what's called the rib cage. And the rib cage is essentially a. Uh, let me grab it. Oh, you're playing with the photo, aren't you? I'm trying to figure out why Steve's moving the remote around. He's looking at himself. So what we do is we, we there's a kit from Backbone, who's one, we're a reseller for Backbone, and they're a, a great company in Canada. 
and they make a little kit, as you can see, here it is, and it will allow you to convert your GoPro into the ability to thread on lenses very, very easily. And you can not only thread on the smaller lenses that are like the stock lens, but you can also thread on larger lenses and even go, so basically this is set up for a C or a CS mount, and that's a very common CCTV security camera industry lenses. You go into the bank and you see the big lenses that look about this size. That's what these are. That's the CCTV world, which is where a lot of this stuff is and has been. And that industry has created this kind of small camera systems. And now this industry is controlling it sort of because of a lot of what we do. Tails wagging the dog. Yeah, exactly. So, so we're looking at a, it says CS mount, it says 9 to 40 millimeter. What's the crop factor on yeah, the? Yeah, so the uh, crop factor is a 5.7 on the GoPro. Okay. So that's a six times nine. So that's a 54 to 240. Yeah, it's a... Uh, yeah, I don't have a nine on here, but an eight millimeter would be a 45, and a and a and a uh, 50 millimeter in our world is a 285. So, so yeah, this is a crazy zoom. Yeah, now, that's so one thing you don't normally have. Exactly, exactly. Now the biggest issue is a lot of guys are doing the UAV stuff, and right now if you have a some women too, people. I mean, company wise, not physical people. Um, so a lot of companies are building gimbals to support the stock GoPro, but the problem is if you start adding large lenses, the, the gimbal is just going to fall. So yeah. what we're showing over here is basically, well, now it's malfunctioning. Let me <laughs> it, just, it just drooped, right, when he pointed nobody, at the, uh, at the drone. So he's got a drone uh, with, a, with a gimbal underneath there. With yeah, the lens on. so what we're showing here is basically it's a prototype uh, that we're getting built for us. It's the most powerful uh, GoPro-based gimbal that exists in the world. The motors in it are, are really, really powerful, but more powerful than anything you'll ever, you'll ever see. It's very similar to the size motors that you'll see in some of the handheld three-axis gimbals. Very similar to those kind of stuff. But this is basically, and the issue with it is, again, weight. So you add more powerful motors, the weight increases. But sure. the ability is to put these larger lenses on it, and the higher... So this is considered a large lens. What large lens for What he's GoPro. pointing at is about uh, maybe almost three inches long and an yeah. inch and a half in diameter. Exactly. That's a giant For a lens. GoPro, it's giant. But keep in mind, this can help. This has a C-mount. You can actually put, with this kit, you can put Canon, Fuji, Nikon, any digital SLR, Micro Four Thirds, as long as you have a C-mount to E, F, whatever it is, right? Whatever the oh, company Oh, I is. thought CS just made it down to the small format. No, yeah, it does. So so the, the lens mount that comes on the GoPro is known as an S-mount or an M12 because of the 12 millimeter diameter barrel. Then we adapt it with the rib cage up to a CS and then with a step ring to a C. And then if you take that adapter and you go to an, a wider adapter, you can actually, like I said, adapt all the bigger lenses on. You're going to be, oh, we don't sell the adapters, Backbone does, uh, or you can go to companies like B&H and you can get a C to an F or a C to an E or whatever. And you can essentially, you know, you'll have this giant lens and this little tiny camera behind it. It's really <laughs> funny. You go to Backbone site and you'll they see some great so, pictures. So you just, just hold on to this giant lens like a yeah, cylinder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of lenses have threads on them, you know, a tripod yeah. mount on the lens. So essentially you just mount the lens to a tripod and the camera's just hanging just off the back. Sticking on yeah. the back. Again, tail wagging the yeah, dog. Yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, we, it, this kit, it's, it's it hasn't been able to be used as much for the UAV industry because of weight okay. and balance. But so with, these new motor gimbals. with our gimbal here that we've been working on, yeah, that's going to be a, definitely something you can do. Very cool, very cool. This is really interesting. I didn't know this this entire <laughs> industry existed. Of course, it it's would. It's a very be. niche one, but we have a lot oh, of customers that do it. There's a lot of customers yeah, we, for this. We, they have a lot of fun people. So, Nolan, if people want to learn more about yep. this and, uh, and look your company up, down in San Diego, yep. by the yep. way, where yep. I go all the time, <laughs> where's, uh, where would people find it? Yeah, we're at poproductions.com. That's P-E-A-U. Uh, productions.com slash store if you want to browse our store. We have hundreds and hundreds of products. Uh, we moved, We just moved to a gigantic office in Mission Valley in San Diego, which we're getting the process of setting up. Uh, so we're growing very fast, and we're getting a lot of people come in. And we do a lot of cameras, so we need the help. <laughs> all right, all right, Nolan, thank you very much, and good no luck problem. to you. Thank you, yeah.